to magnify, magnify the Lord, Lord and worship King. Oh yes, we have, we have come into this house to magnify, to magnify the Lord and worship Him. Oh, we have, we. To magnify, to magnify the Lord and worship Him. Oh, and oh, worship Him. He, Jesus, Christ. He's the only Lord. Lord. We have, we have, we have. Lift up holy hands and worship him. Worship him. Oh, we have, we have come into this house to lift up holy hands and then worship him. To lift up holy hands oh, and worship Him, worship Him, oh, worship Him, Jesus Christ, only Lord, only Lord, so forget about yourself, say so, forget about and concentrate, and concentrate on Him, and worship Him. And worship him. It's not about you, it's not about me, so, so, so forget get about, about yourself. Concentrate, and concentrate on Him, and worship Him, worship Him. So far, so forget. Concentrate, concentrate on him and worship him. Worship him. Oh, worship Jesus Christ. He's the only Lord. Concentrate, concentrate, concentrate on, on him and worship him. Oh, we have, we have come into this house to concentrate, to concentrate on him and worship him. Jesus.
Good morning, Centerville. I'm so glad that you're able to join us this morning from your homes or wherever you choose to be at this morning. We are so glad you're able to tune in with us this morning. You, you, you are indeed ready for a treat this morning. Uh, before we do that, though, let's go into a, let's have a word of prayer. Bow with me, please. Lord, as we begin our journey into this new season, Father, Remind us that every step, every decision along the way, Father, is sinking sand. And lonely as it may feel sometimes, Father, as we go through this coronavirus pandemic, Father, we ask that you build our lives, Father. Build our lives on something solid, solid rock, Father, as we call Christ. Father God, be with us as we weather the storms, weather the challenges, Father. We ask that we stand in prayer right now, Father, for this church, this country, our leadership, Father. And Father God, we ask that the minister who is coming before you this morning, Lord, we ask that you put on his lips, Father, put in his, in his mind, Father, the words that are coming from you, Father, prick the hearts of those who need it, Father. Father God, we know that the authority and power and the touch from you, Father, is all we need. Father God, we pray these things in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amicalites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and, it had, and had taken the two women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said, to Abiathar, the priest, Amalekai's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar, Abathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Verse 9. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Besar, where those that were left behind stayed. I read for you 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 9. May the Lord bless those hearers, doers, and believers of his word. Lord, whatever you're doing in the season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, whatever, whatever you're doing, don't. Don't do it without me, Lord. Don't do it without oh, 
whatever you're doing in this season. The Lord's Supper was instituted by Christ himself. The Lord's Supper has four purposes according to the scriptures. It is a communion of the fellowship in the blood and body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 10, 15 through 21. The Lord's Supper is the commemoration of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, 1 Corinthians 11 and 24. The Lord's Supper proclaims the death of Christ, 1 Corinthians 11 and 26. And the Lord's Supper proclaims that the fact that Jesus is coming back again, 1 Corinthians 11 and 26. One of the scriptures that I like to read of the Lord's Supper comes from Matthew 26, 26 through 29. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you for your precious son, Jesus, your son that died on the cross on a blood-soaked cross on the hill of Calvary. And we just honor him, Lord, for giving us an opportunity to be part of the kingdom of God. We lift him up and we praise his holy name. We give him thanks now and forever. Amen.
been so good to me. So good. Yes, you have, Lord. You've been so good. Oh, you've been so been so good. I, I, I just want to thank you. When I thank you, Lord. Keep making a way you made. You made a way. Even through the circumstance, you keep making, making a way, making a way. When I thank you, you Lord. Ooh, 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 The offerings come from 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. And the Bible tells us three things about the offerings. They tell us, number one, when to give. They also tell us how to give. And three, the benefits of giving. 2 Corinthians 9, beginning in verse 6, it says that, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Then he looks at the benefits of giving. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance in every good works. Let us give thanks for the offering. Heavenly Father, we ask you to accept these offerings and use them to your glory. May these offerings bring shelter to the homeless, comfort to the sick, rest to the weary, and hope to the homeless. May these offerings be used to extend your kingdom here on earth. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Oh God, said all of the glory, all the glory belongs to you. Oh, belongs all the glory belongs to you, oh God. Said oh God, oh God. Oh, all of the glory. All the glory belongs to you. I belong. All the glory belongs to you. Oh God. Said, oh God. Oh God. Let me hear you say hi. Oh God. oh God, 
From Jeremiah, chapter 8 and verses 18 through 22. I want to give you the background of the reading. You see, Israel as a nation suffered greatly, and they paid a very dreadful price for worshiping the idols and their unfaithfulness to God. And on many occasions, God had to bring judgment upon that nation. Time after time, they had to be chastised to remind them of their failure to remain faithful. In our scripture, the portion that was read today, we see Israel is not only in rebellion, but standing in the brink of eternal destruction because the Babylonian army that was led by King Nebuchadnezzar was about to end their freedom. They were about to end the blessings that God had given them in their country. In a very short time, they would be slaves in the land of Babylon. That slavery during that particular time meant they would spend 70 years away from the promised land. It would be the last time that most of this generation of people would see their beloved city and the temple where God would meet them. In just a few months, Nebuchadnezzar would take Hananiah, Messiah, and Azar as prisoners and slaves into Babylon. It was in Babylon. Their names would be changed. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And as you know, historically, they would fight or force the fiery furnace. God would walk with them and give them deliverance from what was appearing to be death. 
shortly thereafter, King Belshazzar would see the hand of God as he wrote on the wall. As he wrote on the wall of that palace, and if you recall, he fell dead. Babylon will fall to the Medes and the Persians. And only a few years after Daniel would face the lion's den under King Doris. But it's God who would step in and give them lockjaw and have them purring as kittens. It was during this time while a slave in the service of King Cyrus, that Daniel had his great vision to deal with the future picture of the world, the history, and the time when there would be great tribulation. Seventy years later, Nehemiah, under the orders of King Cyrus, went back to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls of the city. He was the first to get permission to rebuild Israel, Nehemiah. God would bring Israel back into the promised land again because of his great mercy and his great love. In Jeremiah 8, again as we get to verses 19, The Bible says, listen to the cry of my people from a land far away. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king no longer there? Why have I aroused my anger with thy images, with thy worthless foreign idols? Verse 20, the harvest is past. The summer has ended, and we're not saved. Verse 21, since my people are crushed, I am crushed. I mourn, and horror grips me. Verse 22 again, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is there no healing for the wound of my people? Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? The words that we read in the scriptures deals with Israel's captivity and going into Babylon. And from the heart of the weeping prophet Jeremiah, we hear these words spoken in utter grief and utter pain because Jeremiah knew the judgment was coming. And uh, all of his preaching would be in vain because no one could stop the judgment. But brothers and sisters, let me bring it to your attention quickly. Israel's condition speaks to us of our own condition today. Israel's God God's special people, yeah. special spiritual people were under attack from enemies on both sides. They were surrounded. There was no way to escape. The enemy had come from the far to steal, to kill, to destroy Israel once and for all. 
Might I suggest to you, when you look around and you look at us today, when you look at television, our programming known roughly as talk shows, they parade daily the worst of human nature, every kind of deviant and different doctrine. The stars of our society are falling. Those whom we have made idols now more than ever are being exposed to clay feet. I want you to note the last verse in Jeremiah 8. Raises a cry that has echoed 200 centuries. And it's louder now today than ever before. And that gives me my subject for the next few moments. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Our first effort is to get the diagnosis. And our land is sick. The people are sick. The spirit of our country is weak. We need a bomb in Gilead. If a bomb will be applied, the prescription must be filled. But the, shall I say, the illness must be identified. God created you and I for the purpose of worshiping him in spirit and in truth. In the first chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes, in about verse number nine, it says, the things that have been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. Because there is no new thing under the sun. Right. Jeremiah 29 and verse number 11. For I know the plans I have for you, God says. Plans to prosper and not to harm you. Plans that will give you hope and a better future. That being true today, the word of God is always available to give us guidance. And when we are hungering and thirsting after righteousness, we need to look at the Bible and find the real role models, the real heroes that we can emulate and imitate. But let's look at the Hebrew nation of Judah. And let's listen to the prophet God as he analyzes the condition of their society. We're going to listen because we need to identify our own condition here. In Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse number 28, in the NIV, where then are the gods you made for yourselves? Let them come if they can save you when you're in trouble. For you, Judah, have as many gods as you have towns. God was hurt. He was crushed. He was disappointed. He was disappointed then and he's still disappointed now. Even so, in spite of all the rebellion, God continues to bless us. The godly, the ungodly, they're all 
And we are all recipients of his love. But each day that we live, we have to understand we have an opportunity to repent. Because Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 9, he reminds us that God is long-suffering and not willing that any should perish. But we must admit for the most part as Moses called the people in Exodus, so are many of us stiff-necked, puffed up with foolish perceptions. We worship creations rather than the creator. I believe with all my heart, our society has turned its face against the Lord God and worship idols made by man's hand that's established in man's head. We consciously or unconsciously have sought other gods to pay tribute to. Why do you say that, Brother Smith? Because we don't pay our time right. as God commands. We are too involved with making sacrifices to God's like the name of General Motors, Chrysler, Ford, BMW. They getting all our money. And when they're not getting, we got God like Visa, Master Child, American Express. And when they have possession of us, we still have other gods like crack cocaine has become the God of the insane. Heron and others, and alcohol is still a God among us. And who can forget the idea that pleasure, sexual pleasure, has become the God of many. And I don't know about you, but who among us is not motivated solely by the nation's number one God, that almighty dollar. And might I suggest to you while passing by, there are those who make appearances in the church occasionally out of what they feel is an obligation rather than serving the Lord through continued commitment. But God is watching us. He sees all, he knows all. Proverbs 15 and verse number three. The eyes of the Lord are every place, beholding the good as well as the bad. The cities of America crowd because the judgment of the Lord is at hand. And you know, the problem we have is that America still failed to hear after so many biblical examples and practical examples around the world. Fear fills the heart of the people. And I wanted to just put something, a nugget here. Which one of us among us that when we see young people on a corner, would rather be behind locked doors, are you all following me, in barred windows. We cage ourselves to keep ourselves from what we perceive to be wicked men. Listen. It's gotten so bad, brothers and sisters, you don't mind if I pause right here. When we get ready to go to a cash machine at dark, I don't know about you, but I believe that's the worst thing you can do. There are thousands of churches 
in Illinois, in Missouri, and a lot of them along with Centerville are boasting about serving God. We, we say, come, this is the house of prayer. We pray. We pray. We pray for deliverance. Day by day, we ask for God to give us deliverance. It seems as if it's on deaf ears. God told Jeremiah to tell Judah. Now he tells us. Chapter 2 and verse 17. And you have bought this on yourselves by rebelling against the Lord your God when he wanted to lead you and show you the way. In the following verses in that chapter, he said, God has shut the windows of heaven to our prayers as a nation because we have worshiped idols. That brings me to my second point as we deal with the prognosis. Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 20. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Yeah. Verse 21 says, for the hurt of thy daughter of my people, am I hurt? I am black with astonishment, and it has overtaken me. A nation that deserts the Lord is a nation in line for nothing but trouble. A nation that forsakes the Lord is a nation that faces the most devastating of consequences. One of the most daring. One of the most, I should say, terrifying. Proclamation was spoken by Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. I'm giving you the NIV version. Y'all don't mind me taking my time. The foreigners who reside among you will rise above you higher and higher, and you will sink lower and lower. Verse 44, they will lead to you or lend to you more correctly, but you will not lend to them. China. I would say, boy, I could make this. Are you all following me? They will be head, but you will be the tail. 45, all these curses will come on you. Question, does it seem like today there are diseases that we've heard of before. AIDS, the return of polio, coronavirus, venereal diseases. Look at what the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse number 61. The Lord. The disaster not recorded in this book of the law until we are destroyed. That moves me to my third point. The bomb in Gilead. I have painted a, a picture of nothing but doom. But there is a bomb in Gilead. The question is, what will we do about it? What changes are necessary for the bomb to cure the ills of our society? What lesson can we learn to lessen the tide of murders, the subversion, and the corruption, and the rebellion? What can we do to hold up the wrath of God. Should we depend on politicians? 
There's no one really with a common sense for me. Notice how they end their speeches. With the changes in the law of the land, stronger penalties, more prisons, capital punishment, and cries for a new morality, will that really make a difference? Can you and I depend upon medical research or environmental scientists to return us to good health? Even though I cry sometimes, but I love you. No, no, no. But there is a bond. Love you. And love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. There is no concoction. I don't get it right. That we can come up with that would be a remedy for the people. Love you. There is no physician that we know of with a prescription for the sickness that fills the land. The legislative act will not bring the false gods down. No one voting for a new president is not the answer. There is no world leader that can rally us to this purpose. But there is a bomb in Gilead, a divine one, a bomb for the dying of our world. That bomb in Gilead comes from a single tree planted on once outside the walls of Jerusalem. That bomb was on a hill that we call Galilee. Right. That bomb was a tree Without roots, that bomb with water brief, but for eternity. It was watered with the blood <laughs> that dripped on the side of a sacrificial lamb. There was a tree that only stood for a few hours, a tree that offered no shade. Harvard, no nest, weighed in no breeze, produced only one piece of fruit, and that was a saving grace <laughs> of God Almighty. And my God says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, can I get a witness? And turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I'll heal their land. It's celebration time, but it's up to the God's people. The judgment of the nation, it differs with each one of us. I want to give you another story before I bring my clothes. It's in Genesis chapter 10, verse 19, when the Lord declared judgment upon the wicked twin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham besought and negotiated with God to spare the city if there were 100 righteous people. But during the compromise, he said, if there's 10, I'll spare 10,000. 10 people who would fear God, I'll spare. <laughs> I wish I had some help here. But the Bible says mm -mm, that I'll pardon the people. I won't destroy but the book lets us know that 10 couldn't be found. Am I right about it? But you and I 
have the opportunity to avoid destruction. Opportunity to avoid eternal damnation. Is that all right? And because all we have to do as a people, we've got to know that God is working in our heart. <laughs> Come on, Brother Smith. We've got to know through faith and submission to him, all things are possible. I, I believe that you and I have the keys to the salvation of the nation. The book tells us after we repented of our sin, Luke 13 and 3, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our hearts that he died for our sins, that he was resurrected on the third day, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if we repent, Romans 10, 9 and 10, if we submit to the watery grave of baptism, Act 2, 38, and he'll wash away all our sins. Listen. When we stand before him in righteous garment, then the bomb has the healing power. That bomb is Jesus for the healing of the nation. And the good old thing about Jesus, I found there's just healing in his name. His love and his compassion has invaded the world. And you and I have the privilege of sitting up in the kingdom of God. Yes, we can tell the world when we leave here, there is a bomb and Gilead. You can be healed by the master's hand. Because it's just wonderful to be touched by the man that came from Nazareth, came from the ghetto, and he would touch us. Are you all following me? I know it. He touched slaves and shackled fails. He touched the weak and they became too strong to be oppressed. He touched a home and became a house of delight. He touched the sick, and they became whole. He touched the lost, and they began to thank God they were found. He touched the blind, and they saw Jesus again. He touched closed ears, and they heard the old, old story. Oh, he touched broken hearts, and they were made to rejoice. He touched lying feet, and they began to leap. He touched filthy mouths, and they began to praise. Ah, Jesus is here to save. Jesus is here to deliver. Since he washed our sins away, since the Lord has given us grace and mercy, we can go ahead and say, what can wash away my sin? Ah, can make me whole again. Nothing but the blood. The blood of Jesus. And as I close, there is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb at Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. If you're here today and you're subject to the invitation, God's looking for you because He's using. Not Jeremiah's. He's using preachers. He's using members to tell the story why we have all these diseases and the things that are going on in our world today. Believe it. Trust it. Because remember, God keeps his word whether we do or not. The lesson is yours. The invitation is yours, and I beg you to come right now while the blood runs warm in our bodies. Oh, show, show 
me be the way oh Lord show show And this is the time that we come to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, when we are low in our valleys, we need to strengthen ourselves in the Lord, our God, because he is able to bring us out of our valleys, uh, to bring us out of our sickness, to bring us out of our crisis, whatever that you need, God is able to do it for you. But you have to believe. You have to put your faith, your hope, your whole heart in believing that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was raised upon the third day. And when he raised, he made all things possible that we may be able to inherit the kingdom of God. And you've got to believe that. He is our Savior. So be that as it may, we might be struggling now because of the coronavirus, but I guarantee you he is still in control. Now I just want to take a moment or two to just to go to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because I know that he is able. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We just come to you as humbly as we know how, knowing that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but we are your children, Lord, and we'll come to you thanking you and praising you and asking that you continually to be with us and guide us and lead us. We ask you, Heavenly Father, that your precious Son died for us, that we may be able to inherit 
the tree of life. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, that through you all things are possible. And we just lift our holy hands unto you. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to bless the sick. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to bless the homeless. We ask you, Lord, to even touch those that are bereaved and, and those that have lost loved ones through this uh, pandemic that we are going through. We just ask you, Lord, to just to bless us. Bless us in a special way. The only way that you know how to bless us and give us hope. We ask this in your precious son Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning once again. Despite being in the comforts of your own home, you can, you can still remain connected to God. And please listen to our announcements to find out how you can remain connected to God via online, uh, through our online media. Uh, Corona Grace Online Bible Study is Sundays, 9 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. And please see the Zoom information on your screens. Titus and Timothy Pastoral Epistles, second and fourth Sundays, uh, and that's a study with, at, at 5 p.m. with our own Brother Sykes. We have a youth adults Zoom uh, Bible study on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Our Corona Grace Bible study Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. goes on every Wednesday. Also, if you can um, check out our youth uh, connection, youth ages 11 and up, they have Bible study on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And parents, keep your kids connected to God and go to our YouTube, um, go to YouTube, type in elementary Bible lessons. There are many lessons out there for you and your kids to study and learn the goodness of God. The basic needs team will be reaching out to see if anyone is in need of any basic items. If you are in need of any other items, please see, please have uh, the Benevolence Ministry uh, assist you in, in getting those items. If you are in need of prayer, please call one of our elders, our ministers, or our deacons for prayer. You can also contact us via our uh, website, centervillechurchofchrist.com, and you can put in your prayer request. There are various ways to give your offering. If you have a cash offering, call the church and we'll arrange a member of the, of the church to come by and pick up your offering. Our communion packs are also available Tuesday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Just drive up and we'll bring it out to you. Please don't get out of your vehicles. And lastly, let us keep each other lifted up in prayer. Have a blessed week. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, oh how I love, how I love, I love to call in your name. Oh Jesus, Jesus. Oh Jesus, Jesus, every day, every day, your name, your name is the same. Oh, sweet Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, oh how I love, how I love, I love to call your name. Oh Jesus, Jesus. My, 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 Ooh, Jesus, Jesus, that every day, every day, your name, your name oh, is the same. Oh, I said every day, every day, your name, your name is the same. Said every day, 